Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode or edition of Rachel John's uh, Bookstore Tours. I had to remember what I called it there for a moment. Today, I am delighted to have a very special bookshop and guest with me. It's The Little Blue Bookshop and Amanda from The Little Blue Bookshop. So I'm going to ask Amanda to come in and join us and tell us about her wonderful store. Welcome, Amanda. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, thank you so much for, for agreeing to do this. I love bookshops and, you know, obviously no one's travelling at the moment, so no. not visiting any um, well, bookshops this time around. So I have decided to do it, like, virtually instead and go and have a bit of a That's virtual... That's a great idea. It's, a, it, it's interesting how everyone is using technology so much more and so much and so creatively now. It's, it's great to see. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think, you know, there's so much annoying things about technology um, and social media, but there's also a whole load of really good things. And when it works, it works well. When it doesn't it work. Does. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and your shop. Start with. Sure. So uh, I'm originally from Adelaide, uh, love- but my husband, sorry. I love South Australia. <laughs> I know. I love Adelaide. Mm -hmm. Uh, But my husband grew up on a farm just outside of Crane. Crane is a small country town in um, country Victoria, halfway between Echuca and Swan Hill in the Northern Murray. Um, And he grew up on a farm just outside here, but he moved to Adelaide, um, which is where we met and married and had kids and adopted some ducks, as you do. Oh, my husband is obsessed with ducks. We had them once a few years ago, quite a few years ago now, so he'll be very jealous about that. (laughs) Um, yeah, it started as like two or three and, and at the moment, unfortunately, all of our mummy ducks have had babies, <laughs> lots of babies. So we've How got, many do you have? Um, well, at the moment, I think we've got about 18. Wow. Mm-hmm. We had about block. 14 the most because we had babies, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> then they came to the unfortunate end due to the dog next door. Ooh, no. <laughs> yes. uh, no, okay. <laughs> Um, Which the tone has gone down. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's bring this back up again. So um, about three years ago, we decided to move to Kareng, as you do. So we packed up the kids and the house and the ducks and yes. we moved to Kareng. Um, and then about a bit over six months ago, I decided to open my own bookshop. Um, oh. And so I did. <laughs> I love it. Um, it was something I, I've always loved books. Um, yeah. As a child, I wanted to be a librarian. I just, I've always loved books. And so um, I was actually looking for a, a new job and I put a question up on Facebook to my friends saying, you know, hey, what does Kerrang need? What kind of businesses do we need in town? And everyone came back with all sorts of good ideas, but none that really spoke to me until someone said bookshop. And I'm like, why didn't I think of that before? That's brilliant. Um, I love I love how you actually outsourced your decision too. That's what we oh, do yes. these days. Yes, Everything yes, goes absolutely. Uh, well, that way if it goes bad, I can blame everyone else. True. I love that too. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, and then I love penguins, um, have always loved penguins since I was a very little girl. And yeah. the little blue penguin is Australia's native penguin, also known as the fairy penguin. Yeah. And so the little blue bookshop makes so, sense. Oh, that's gorgeous. I love and And, of course, because I, when I first saw your little logo of your bookshop, you know, I immediately thought of penguin books and puffin books. So in some ways it kind of, um, you know, it, penguins have been around with books <laughs> for a penguins while. books have been connected for a long time, yes. Yeah, and so I think so, and it's a little bookshop um, name. So it's great that you have a, yeah, story there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so how is it going? So how long have you been open now? Just over six months. Wow. So I started in the middle of COVID, as you do. You open a new business in the middle of COVID. A bookshop, yeah. Well, I think it's amazing because, you know, we are hearing so much about, you know, bookshops closing down due to – so it's a a gutsy move opening a bookshop, especially in um, COVID. But readers, there is nothing better than going into a bookshop and being able to not only – look at all the books and, you know, pick things up that you may not have even thought of, but to talk to the people that understand books. And obviously, you know, you're passionate about books too. So yes. uh, uh, Crane, like, has it been good so it far? It really has been. It really has been. People here are very conscious of the fact that we need to support local. 
uh, mm -hmm. because if there is any sort of lockdown or anything like that, we can't leave town or we don't want to leave town. So we need to support the businesses that are here. And people of Kerrang have been really, really supportive about that, which is great. Thanks, um, thanks. There's also a really huge population of people who like to read a physical book mm. um, and like to give physical books to, and especially their grandchildren, as gifts. Yeah. So I've been really fortunate that the locals here have been lovely. That's so good to know. And as, as someone who has had a small business in the country myself, uh, not a bookshop, sadly, I did always want to um, own a bookshop oh. and I did a bookshop course, but I am have not had a very good business head. Luckily, uh, the business that we had, the small supermarket but my husband and my mother were you know big the bigger part of it than me so they they were better so um did you do any sort of training in business or had you had any before i love it, I love it. that would have been like, the logical that would have been the logical step but no i kind of just launched into yeah. it um and just kept going oh i'll just look into it a little bit more i haven't committed just look into it a little bit more not committing look at properties yeah. not committing look at tight names of bookshop not committing and then realize actually i am now kind of committed i'm um, committed so, no there was it's been one of those little step and little step and not realizing just how deep i was in until well i think that's a great story and i'm so glad that people are supporting you and you'll get to it later more of how they can do that but also i, I think um sometimes half the or maybe more than even half the, I can't think of the word I'm looking for. I'm terrible with words. Um, but as an author, that's really great to hear. I know. I can, as an author, I can write a sentence and then I can think that's not the right word and I can go off and do it. But when I'm talking, it doesn't work that way. Um, but I think so much is about passion, you know, in a bit in business. And, you know, that can take you a long way. <laughs> and exactly. determination. Same in writing, passion and determination. Stubbornness. So obviously, um, you, this is how you got into the book industry because you decided... No, we've we've had that story and that that's great. Um, but you were obviously a reader beforehand because you said you were yes. passionate about books. So as a child, what were your what was your reading experience like as a child? I, I, I've always loved reading. Um, I've always been a big reader. Uh, my parents, especially my dad, was also a really big reader. Um, and he had you know bookshelves of books and encouraged me to to read some of his authors that he liked. Um, and yeah, he was the one who was staying up till. <laughs> As a, as a child, especially a teenager, he would often sit out in the lounge room, which was opposite my bedroom, to read late at night. Um, and I knew I was up too late if he turned his <laughs> light off first. So you were reading as your covers like so many um, yeah, people. Yeah, exactly. I was one of them. And if he turned his light off first, that was, oh, okay. Yeah, maybe it is a little bit too late. Maybe I should, you know. And, and what kind of. this chapter. <laughs> yeah, which is always one more chapter. One what more kind chapter. of book were you reading? All sorts. Um, so my dad introduced me to sort of older authors like um, uh, Arthur Haley, um, John Cleary, you know, some of those older Aussie kind of authors. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, the library introduced me to uh, library, Nancy yeah. Drew. I loved Nancy Drew as a kid. No, and I never read Nancy Drew and I had friends that did. I feel like I really missed out. You have. <laughs> you have. Um, as well as, you know, the Babysitter Clubs, which is now come back in. And um so yeah all of those oh no that's fantastic and um so i'd like to just apart from books do you sell any other things in your shop i'm guessing in a small yeah, town so, yeah so i do have a few toys um which has been really popular we've just recently lost our target in town which has been yeah. devastating for the town um, Imagine but i've got a few toys yeah. somewhere to go and buy things yeah exactly um and some stationary items Stationery, gotta love the stationery. So you've got notebooks, yeah. got wonderful, yeah. wonderful stuff that book people sort of just can't get enough of. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, I'd love to have you to show us around in a moment, and you can um, you maybe show us some of that stuff. But um, yeah, one more question before we do that. Um, what do do you, have you ever done any author events? I mean, I know you're very small, or not small. I'm sure. No. I, that's, but you. No, I I've, am small, but yes, I have. Um, and I am trying to do about one a month. So oh, wow. Had, That's great. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I've had um, adult fiction. I've had a, um, a children's book author come out, which was really, really popular. Um, so, yeah, I've had a few, which has been really great. Oh, it sounds awesome. And do you do any book clubs or anything like that? Or have you? We do, yes. So we've got a book club for adults, which at the moment is all female, but we're not against the guys joining um, <laughs> in the evening. 
and I'm just starting this term uh, two book clubs for high school kids. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Because there's not a lot in town for non-sporty kids. Yep. So there's lots of football and tennis and netball and all the sports, but for the non-sporty kids, there's not a whole lot. So I'm just starting up this term, a junior high school and a senior high school book club. Oh, I think that is a fantastic idea. I hope it goes gangbusters. Um, so do you I. know, so many good books out there for kids these days. Exactly. And look, a, a book club would have been, I would have loved that as a teen myself. I was about to say. Where to go to talk to other teenagers about books and what they're reading and what they like and share ideas. I would have loved that. So I was, we'll I was about to say I would have loved it, except I didn't read in high school. I was terrible. <gasps> this is why I know it's shocking. It's a shocking thing for an author. Um, lots of there's a whole other story, but I'm that's my biggest regret because I love books now and I read before, you know, primary school, but I was one of those ones that fell away. And I see so many kids do fall away. So I think if you can nurture that love, that's just awesome. And I'm sure there's lots of parents going to be, you know thankful that you're doing that too it sounds like your shop is going great guns and that you've got you know such compassion to get other things going to bring people in from the community into your bookshop so yeah. i'm very i'm very jealous i hope one day i get to come in um come and see you uh, hopefully hopefully you can as well i know perth is oh you froze for a moment i know perth oh. is having a bit of a lockdown at the moment but hopefully you'll be able to Fingers come and join us right. soon Yes. I mean, that's the thing. When I asked the author event question, I'm thinking in some ways it was a hard year to try, you know, doing that. But the fact that you've managed to get some events happening in such a year, I'm sure that once all, you know, things are hopefully back to normal, you'll have even more amazing events. Well, that's the thing. I mean, at the moment, I'm lucky I'm focusing on authors that live nearby. So yep. they're not having to travel too far and hopefully any border restrictions won't affect them. Yeah. Um, and there have been lots of authors that have sort of been close-ish that have been happy to come, which has been really great. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, authors, you know, we love meeting readers. Um, so would you like to give us a little bit of a yes, tour? Yes, absolutely. Part? <laughs> you can lead the way and tell us anything you want. <laughs> so I've got uh, my junior fiction. Which way are we going? And then oh, all picture books. Oh, oh, I yeah. love <laughs> um, oh, I've also got some artwork by some local or, um, local artists around for oh, sale. That's awesome. Which yep. Just adds a little bit of colour to the shelves. Yes. And I um, imagine oh, I love some of that art. Beautiful. I know. There's lots of gorgeous art. And then I've got some gorgeous toys. Oh, they look some. Ooh, I want to go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Some more. I'm trying to angle the camera. My camera work is brilliant, isn't it? Oh, no, it's, but it's fine. You know, it's really good. <laughs> and then I've got my wall of adult fiction. Oh, I can see some ones on there that I'm hoping to read. Um, if you look very carefully, you see penguins all over the place, scattered. I love that as well. In bookshelves oh. all over the place. And I'm seeing you've got a wide variety of um, different types of books there. <laughs> yeah, there really is. Um, I've got a huge variety of authors, um, uh, readers who like all sorts of different books. So it's it's fun for me to try and find books that they will like, not just not you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love those penguins in the snow globe. That's awesome. Yeah. So now have, have you, uh, this is a random question, but you obviously have always loved penguins. Yes. Were these penguins you've had before or have you collected them mostly since and people now are giving you penguins? Yes. Now, these are mostly gifts from people since I've opened the shop. Awesome so, way to get penguins. Open a bookshop. <laughs> <laughs> these um, crocheted ones were actually made by a friend of mine who I used to work oh, with. Wow. I didn't see um, they were crocheted because of this thing, but I'm such so in awe of anyone who can make little toys by crochet. Oh, they're adorable. I want to be able to do that. I know she's so talented. She just sits and knocks one out in a day or so. She's ridiculous. You sell them in the shop? No. You should get a whole load of a whole load of them if you can sell some crocheted penguins in the shop. No, no. This one's mine. <laughs> you can't <laughs> have it. Um, but no, all of the other penguins have come from um, uh, yeah, a customer of mine who loves op shopping. Sorry, bad. Yeah, no, it's all right. Back in. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't. I shouldn't be a, a camera person as well as a talker. Um, who loves op shopping and so when she goes up to the op shops and she sees a penguin she buys it for me 
Oh, so that's spoiled. Awesome. Well, I think it's great. And I can, I can only imagine like in a, in a couple of years how many penguins you will have. <laughs> oh, I know, right? And then I've got some stationery. So I've got some pencils oh, no. and cute erasers. Oh, awesome. And yeah. You can't, you can always go, can't go wrong with drink bottles. I'm always losing no. them. Well, my kids are always losing them. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it's the kids, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, not me. I've got them all over my desk. I've, <laughs> oh, no, that's so fantastic. And is this so, the yeah. back of the store? Yeah, there we go. The back in the yeah. Well, thank you so much for that tour. That looks awesome and you've got so much, um, so many good things there. Yay! And I love the little extra detail with the penguins. That's so much fun. They are gorgeous. They are. I'm going to tell you another random question before I ask you the, our final few. Mm. So, because you've opened a, re a bookshop recently and, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that I think love the idea of owning a bookshop or running a bookshop, hmm. have you got any tips for anyone who would want to, to start their own bookshop? Just give it a go. It, look, Just it is a lot of fun. Um, on my quiet days when I don't have any customers, I have to sit and read, you know. Oh. So it's, it, it's, it's, it's terrible. Because you have um, to be able to recommend books. So it's work. Exactly. You know, um, and it's a great excuse to get out of housework at home. You know, I, love I, can't, I can't do the dishes. I have to read this book today. I love it. I can tell we <laughs> would be besties because you love Diet Coke too. Well, you were drinking before, so I'm just assuming, you know. And you don't like the housework. Any yeah. excuse to get out. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, loving it. So do your connection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, well, um, so now I'm just going to ask you a few more questions. Mm -hmm. Um. What's one book you constantly find yourself recommending? And I know I've only done one episode so far, and I know this is a hard question for um, for bookshop owners. It is. So you can. I'm pretty. I'm not not, not harsh. If you want to recommend a few, go for it. I can't. I can't recommend one. It's impossible. It it kind of depends on what I've just recently read. Yeah, fair enough. Um, because I can only keep so many books in my head at a time. I understand um, that. <laughs> But yeah, uh, but I guess uh, especially from the teens and the older teens, I always encourage to read um, some of the classics like Jane Austen, um, mm -hmm. you know, Pride and Prejudice and Emma and some of them, they may have been written, you know, 100, 200 years ago, but the the characters are just as, as real as they are today. Totally um, agree. And the, themes, the universal themes of love and loss. And, you know. Love and loss and, and friendship and um, forgiveness and all that. It, it's just as familiar it is now yeah um, so yeah I, I always encourage you know yes grab a, a a new book but go back to the classics some of them are brilliant they're, they're a classic for a reason true and there's some beautiful editions of them too they really are they really are absolutely gorgeous gorgeous covers whenever I go into a bookshop and I see a new you know hardback edition of one of my favorite classic books I'm like mm, I want that one but I don't mm -hmm. need it I want mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. there's there's only so many versions of Little Women you need, but exactly. But needs once, you know. Do, exactly. Does that matter? <laughs> it's the worst things to spend money on, I figure. Um, exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much for spending a couple of well, more than a couple of minutes with us, showing us a wonderful bookshop. I think um, the Little Blue Bookshop just looks like a very, very special place. And I do hope that one day I get to come and visit. Um, Love and to have you. Look, um, before we I let you go, um, can you tell us where everyone can find you online? Sure. So I'm on Facebook, the Little Blue Bookshop, uh, also Instagram. And I also have uh, a shop, an online shop that people can peruse and, and buy from. Um, so, again, it, Google the Little Blue Bookshop and you'll find me. Awesome. Thank you. I was going to ask you about the online um, book selling because yes. I think that's one of the things that has really happened in COVID, like a lot of bookshops and not just bookshops, I'm guessing, you know, other types of shops have, you know, really embraced that online platform um, and delivered to locally but also further afield. Exactly, exactly. So I have I've just started up a book subscription service. Oh, awesome. Um, so for twenty dollars a month, you get a book and a chocolate from um, Charlotte Hyper, which is a local factory here in Kerrang. They make beautiful chocolates. Um, and so yes, they, there's an option for local delivery, but then also postage Australia wide. Wow, I'm so glad you told us about that. That book subscription pack sounds amazing, and I hope that um, our viewers will will check it out. 
Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amanda. Um, Thank and you for having me. You're welcome. And I hope, yeah, you enjoy the rest of your week and your reading. <laughs> Thank you. You too. Thank you so much. Bye.